On this Debaco University video, we're going to go over carbon footprint analysis for indoor cannabis production. And even if you're not considering growing cannabis indoors, this is an important consideration because we're all part of the electrical power grid and we want to be mindful of the impact that indoor cannabis production has. All right, let's look at the carbon footprint analysis for indoor cannabis production. First off, here is the research article, uh, proper citation, front page kind of screenshot, and as well as a direct link. If you want to look at some of the information presented here in more detail, this is going to provide a general summary. So first off, energy, cannabis energy consumption. So the uh, emergent industry of indoor cannabis production utilizes high energy intensive process and is highly inefficient overall. In the United States, this represents an annual uh, energy uh, expenditure of about six billion dollars. What we're seeing here is kind of the projected from 2019 to 2030 uh, electricity demand, uh, the kind of core demand growth, the electric vehicles, data centers, as well as cannabis cultivation. We can see just over time the anticipated great increase in cannabis cultivation regarding power consumption and really just power consumption overall here. Now we're looking specifically about cannabis. We're seeing lighting, ventilation, and air conditioning being the vast majority there. You might be wondering about what, what's this vehicles? Well, there is transport involved with cannabis too in general uh, for consideration. So the carbon footprint for indoor cannabis production. So one kilogram of final product is associated with emissions of about 4,600 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions to the atmosphere. Aggregate US emissions are equivalent to those of about 3 million cars, to kind of put it in perspective. So this is kind of a little bit concerning when we're looking at scaling up potential for indoor cannabis production, um, the energy inputs that is needed for that particular process. Now the carbon footprint for indoor cannabis production, we kind of saw a graphical representation here, we're seeing a little more chart form. Growers need to consider all aspects of plant production that require energy. Lighting is typically the highest, but with this is also ventilation requirements that will also have energy demands. We need to be mindful of that as well. In addition to vehicles, as I said, drying, water handling, there's a whole bunch of other factors uh, to take into consideration as well. So it's not just those, even though those might be the greatest or highest energy consumption. Now we're looking at the carbon footprint and we're looking at kind of the energy cost at three levels of efficiency. So for indoor cannabis, the carbon footprint uh, represented here, and here we see indoor cannabis, the electrical cost. Now we're seeing the worst, the average and improved conditions. And this assumes a wholesale uh, price of $4,400 per kilogram. But keep in mind that wholesale prices are highly variable and also are poorly documented. So the worst conditions, these would be the least efficient. Average would be your typical um, cannabis facility. And improved conditions are ones that are going to use more efficiency symptoms. Uh, operations. Might come with more upfront costs, but hopefully long-term reduction in costs. And we can see that there is some variation overall, but we can still see that we are definitely consuming a lot of energy with our indoor cannabis production. So how does it compare? So yes, it consumes a lot, but how does it compare to other industries? Well, are using 2006 data by sector, and chemist chemistry production uh, sector is the greatest energy consumer at nearly 20 megajoules, and that's MJ, uh, per thousand dollars. Now, chemists is followed next by the paper industry, which is uh, 14 megajoules per thousand dollars. We can see here, though, clear, sadly, winner in this category as far as um, energy consumption goes compared to these other sectors. Then if we're going through, we're going to compare cannabis. This is based on sector. Well, now if we compare it by U.S. building type. So the United States, uh, cannabis production requires eight times as much energy per square foot as a typical U.S. commercial building. Also specifically, it's four times more than a hospital and about 18 times more than an average U.S. home. So again, this again gives you that idea of the massive amount of primary energy that's needed for an indoor cannabis growing facility. So outdoor growing, why don't you say go outdoor? Well, outdoor growing is also not energy free. So just keep that in mind. There is less energy required, but it's not energy free. Shifting cultivation outdoors can nearly eliminate the use for um, the cultivation process. However, energy is still required for water pumping, vehicle transport during production, and distribution remains part of the process. And typically this is more needed than in, for an indoor operation. So there's going to be a little more increase in cost there, but you're not going to have the venting, not have the air conditioning, you're not going to have the energy generation cost. 
A common perception is that the potency of cannabis produced indoors exceeds that of the production of outdoors, leading to consumers to demand cannabis being produced indoors. However, federal sources listed here, as well as independent testing labs, actually find similar potencies when best practices are being used. The indoor facilities can produce a better looking flower, and that's sometimes associated with the purchase of cannabis. So keep in mind the potencies could be similar. Indoors can usually have a more consistent and better perceived um, look associated with it. If you're looking at extraction, it really would not matter uh, if you're growing indoors or outdoors, but outdoors will have less overall energy inputs needed. So the negatives of outdoor production, again, not because outdoor production is like the, the best way and the only way it should be grown, outdoor cu cultivation still has some negative environmental impacts other than its energy use. It could result in deforestation, destruction of wetlands, soil runoff, pesticides, and over application of fertilizers as well. So it's not free of potential negative impacts, but overall they can be a little bit less uh, compared to what we've seen here with the carbon input for indoor cannabis production. And keep in mind as consumers, you're driving the market there. So if you are demanding the indoor production, keep in mind of some of the other side effects that come along with that production process of cannabis.